We're hitting the trail, skimming the water, and painting landscapes today on At Your Leisure. Now, that may sound like a strange combination, but trust me, they all go together in some surprising ways. I'm Stephen Human. First off, join Chad and me as we learn what it takes to become a professional fly fisherman. Then, Zach Cipriano previews one festival where art and adventure go hand in hand. Finally, where can you enjoy all forms of water recreation at once? The answer to that and more are coming your way now on AYL. Going on. Yep. Even I know that. Come so on. I'm, come on, Opie. I'm if gonna, I wanted we're going to do a little fishing do it. today, yeah. Opie. <laughs> it does, this, this is very Mayberry esque, though. You know, it has kind of that. Uh, oh, yeah, the dirt that, road. That, that feel of it, right? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to That's Your Leisure. I'm Chad Booth. And I'm Stephen Human. And today we are at Falcon's Ledge Lodge, which is in Duchesne County, right off of Highway 87. And we're just about 20 minutes north of Duchesne. It's really easy to find. And as you can see, it's a gorgeous area. And it's got all kinds of activities. And the one we are focusing on today is fly fishing. This is going to be like old home week for me, but this for is you. something new for you. Yeah, I have never done it. I've done plenty of fishing. Mm -hmm. all over the world, but I've never done fly fishing, and I understand that there are some different techniques, but I understand also that we have an expert here who's kind of a big deal. <laughs> His name is George Daniel, and those of you who are in fly fishing circles will know exactly who it is we're talking about, and uh, I'm excited to get some pointers and hopefully catch a fish, if not at least feel like I'm somewhat competent. True, and and uh, you do need some help because... I do. I don't know uh, how to hold whoops, it, right? See, we're already... <laughs> these are not... These are not... These are not... We can turn into <laughs> that would, that's my type of show right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough of this fantasy land. Let's get back to reality, Steve. Let's find George and do some fishing. All right. I'm a fly fishing instructor, guide. I'm an author, writer for a number of magazines, so I, I do a little bit in the, in the industry, but I spend about 100 days a year guiding on my local waters in State College, and then probably about 50 or 60 other days of the year, I travel the country, like coming out here to Utah to run clinics for, for various groups and organizations. If you're already into fishing, if you, you already have about 80% of the skills necessary. You, you understand behavior, you know where to find them. The big thing with fly fishing compared to spin fishing and like terminal tackle is understanding that instead of having a, a lure or like a bait where you're basically casting this with a thin line and you're using the weight of the lure to cast, with fly fishing, we are using usually like a very lightweight fly, but relying on the weight of the fly line to unroll it back and forth to present the fly. You are going to be forced to use a lot more skill, I guess you could say, with, with fly fishing. Because essentially, you're not, you're not using live bait. You're using this artificial lure that kind of looks like what you're imitating, but as a result, you have to, you have to work a lot harder. Uh, and it does require a lot more peer uh, performance on your part to fool a fish with a fly. Wow. I've been doing this now for Wow, now I'm going to tell you my age, 32 years. So I've been doing this for a while, and it's great. It's exciting for me to catch fish. But what's even more exciting now, because, you know, when I take my kids out, and when, when they first, when they catch that moment, you get to see kind of the light in their eyes open up. And when you have people coming out here for the first time, I get more excited watching other people catch fish and having that aha moment than I do actually myself. So to be honest with you, it's more re rewarding what I'm doing here than actually going on the stream myself fishing. With casting, with fly fishing, everyone wants to think about trying to push the cast. You always, casting is not designed to be pushed. You're, you're pulling. It's like a ball. You're going to take a ball and you're going to pitch it in the air. You're not pushing the ball to the air. You're pulling the ball and you're releasing it. All right. So how do I keep it from like hitting itself? Because that's what the problem that I was having. It's because you need to pause in the back cast. So just come back, stop it, pause, and go forward, all right? Wait and drift. Pull it out, yep. Pop and drift out. And the other part too is like if you're gonna pitch a baseball out to someone forward, you're not gonna, you're looking down, you're pitching it down. Don't pitch down, look towards the tree line and the outside of that bank, okay? Okay. Yeah, good. That's way better. Thank you, George. Now I don't feel like such a moron. Cause I really was, I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling like an idiot. Well, I think we got the basics down. We do, I'm feeling much more confident about my casting I'm, I'm feeling more confident about your casting too. You haven't caught my pocket in like three minutes. I know. So this is this good. Is, this is good stuff. All right, well, I think we're gonna give this a little bit more time because I would like to catch a fish, but there's also more at Falcon's Ledge to learn about. So we're gonna do that a little bit later in the show. Right now though, we're gonna catch up with Zach Cipriano, who's in one Utah town where life really imitates art. Pablo Picasso once said that every child is an artist. 
The problem is how to remain an artist once you grow up. Ask any artist you know and you'll see that they draw inspiration from a myriad of places. The things they see, the people they know, where they live. So what if one town decided to entirely dedicate itself to the creation of this art? What if this town also happened to be the epicenter of spectacular beauty and unparalleled adventure? I think Picasso would have been pretty interested to find out. Along the coal seams of central Utah, the small city of Helper thrived for a time as the extraction industry transformed the area. Once the mines were sealed, it seemed that Helper's fate was too, and that the town would slowly die and become a footnote on old ghost town websites. Surprisingly, that didn't happen, as a new industry took hold in the shops on Main Street. These businesses were less concerned with the black of coal as they were with the other colors of the rainbow. And almost overnight, Helper transformed from a forgotten strip of Highway 6 into a growing art community where everyone was welcome. Part of that change is due to the thriving Helper Arts, Music, and Film Festival held every August. Now it's in its 23rd year. The festival embraces everything that makes Helper unique, from its past and future to the landscape that inspires its artists. Helper is located in a beautiful location where you've got sandstone cliffs that surround us and the weather is always warm and during the festival but we have a beautiful riverway project just a block away from the festival so you can get down to the river and cool off in the shade. The art festival brings in a lot of people from the surrounding area but as well as outside of the area so it brings a lot of um, of different ideas and thoughts into the area. It's also our mission statement is to give art and experience of art to all people. The festival transforms Main Street into a thoroughfare of paintings, live music, classic cars, and mining history. It's a strange mix, but one that highlights everything that makes Helper different. The most interesting aspect is that you would expect an urban art movement to supplant the rural history and mining legacy of a place like Helper. But the opposite has actually happened, as the two grow together into a strange new culture of respect and adventure. Helper was named for the trains that assisted in moving the coal up the canyon. The idea that we're a mining community just doesn't exist anymore, and it's sad because that's really who we are and it's been difficult to try and redefine ourselves, but the people that have come into our area, the artists, these very talented people, with their talent, they've brought their passion. They love Helper. We wanted a place that was outside of a university situation and could uh, become a permanent off-site, off-campus location where we could isolate the students and really show them what, it, what you had to do to be an artist. And living in a small community like Helper, at least for me, is that it, there are very few distractions here. There's, it's, and it's very simple to get things done. An artist, in order to, I think, to become significant, really kind of needs to get to know themselves more than anything. And here's a, this is a good place for it. The look of the town is really, it looks old fashioned in the town, the main street relatively intact. My, my father-in-law calls it Mayberry. And I think it has that kind of classic main street Americana charm. And that charm extends outward from Helper as well. The San Rafael Swell is right on the doorstep, offering its own blend of history and adventure. Off highway trails lead through canyons and to temples of rock that inspired pioneers to make permanent settlements. It's an area that challenges explorers while embracing them at the same time, just like Helper itself. The Helper Arts, Music, and Film Festival will be going on in just a few weeks, August 18th through the 20th, and everyone is invited to check out not only the paintings and cool cars, but the trails and river runs too. There's a reason Helper has survived downturns and industry implosions. It's a combination of the past, the present, and an uncharted future framed in beauty and exploration. I paint the things around me and Helper feels authentic to me. It feels like a real town. There's old forts and people have warts and it's not fake. So I feel like, you know, I, could I can make great paintings and I hope maybe good paintings here, uh, not traveling, not looking for other places that might be more exciting because the incitement for an artist is, to, is in their head. There's some, some combination between the polish that will come 
with, with more people in, engaged in it and yet this roughness that it's going to have and that, that it's past and that kind of beautiful coal mining history that we have and those, I, I, I find the blend of that really appealing. Now, you too can experience that blend August 18th through the 20th at the Helper Arts, Music and Film Festival. Well, I'm Zach Cipriano. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're at your leisure. Don't go anywhere. If you get up early to get more done, if you believe hard work makes you stronger, don't settle for anything less than the hardest working, smoothest riding side-by-side -side ever built. Polaris Rangers help you haul more, pull more, dump more, and make more of your free time when the work is done. Polaris Ranger, like you, we're driven to do more. Summertime. And now it's even better because summer is free at Ray City RV. That's right. Purchase a trailer or motorhome from Ray City. Pay nothing till October. Over $10,000 off. Time to buy is now. Summer's free at Ray City RV. Run faster. Pull harder. And leave everyone else behind with an impressive 154 horsepower combined with 113 foot-pounds of tire spinning torque. The Maverick X3 absolutely rockets off the line, going from 0 to 60 in 4.9 seconds. All thanks to a turbocharged, intercooled Rotax ACE engine. So get ready to wait for everyone else to catch up. Don't let your next family outing end in tragedy. Don't drink and ride. Driving an OHV under the influence of alcohol is no different than driving your car under the influence of alcohol. Law enforcement officers will be out checking riders and operators of OHVs. You could end up seeing jail time, loss of driver's license, the same stiff penalties that apply to operating a car. This message is from the Utah Division of Parks and Recreation. Ride responsibly. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, I'm Darren Kinder, and we're doing some product reviews on the new dual purpose bikes that Honda's come out with the last few years, and they've got anything from this brand new 250 up to a 1200, but we're going to focus today on the African Twin, which is a 1000cc bike, and they've had this out for a little while now, and it has a lot of really cool features on it, so let's take a look. One of the first things you'll notice on the bike is that it's an ABS bike, but it also has the ability to turn that ABS off so if you're out in the sand or somewhere, you don't want that hooking up on you. It's got an inverted fork on it that's fully adjustable so you can dial it in just the way you want it. Now this is a 1000cc motor, but it has a dual clutch automatic transmission in it, which is really cool. One of the clutches handles gears 1, 3, and 5, and the other clutch handles gears 2, 4, and 6, and that way it's not um, one, one is shifting while the other one is shifting. So they can both handle that job, and it does a super smooth job of changing gears. Now you can put it in automatic mode, or you can put it in manual mode and shift it by hand. Now the bike is, if you have it in manual mode, is really easy to shift. You have your shift down button with your thumb, and you have this little trigger up here for the front to upshift, which is pretty neat. Now the other little trigger up here is actually to change the traction control on the bike. Now the instrument cluster is really nice, fully digital. It also has this bar up here which allows you to mount like a GPS or any other items that you're going to be adding to the bike. Now these bikes are an awful lot of fun to ride and what's really fun about them is all the different gadgets you can get to them. So you know it's like a Jeep or a, a Razor or anything like that where you can just be adding parts on them forever. So I kind of enjoy that myself. Don't tell my wife about that. Um, but uh, anyway, if you'd like to check one of these out, get out to Stedman's and Tooele. They have this one, they have the brand new 250 Rally out there, and they've got a whole bunch of other bikes to choose from. So I'm Darren Kinder, we'll see you next time. It's out there. Something is definitely out there. Whatever it is, it's big. I won't play, I swear, we got so close I could smell it. But then, poof, it was gone. Right. It exists, the new Honda Pioneer 1000 with the best-in-class engine and six-speed fully automatic dual-clutch transmission. Pioneer 1000 from Honda.
summertime. And now it's even better because summer is free at Ray City RV. That's right. Purchase a trailer or motorhome from Ray City. Pay nothing till October. Over $10,000 off. Time to buy is now. Summer's free at Ray City RV. Prepare to be demolished at the Juab County Fair in Nephi, Utah, August 7th through the 12th. Prepare for the extraordinary as we push the limits of excitement at one county fair that changes all the rules. Rodeos and demolition derbies are just the icebreakers and an event that makes teenagers face their fears in front of the crowd and it takes robots and cupcakes to a whole new level. Think you know county fairs? Think again. August 7th through the 12th in Nephi, Utah. It's the Juab County Fair. Find out what makes us different. Welcome back to At Your Leisure, everybody. We are here at Falcon's Ledge Lodge today, and we are experiencing everything that they have to offer. This is a really fun place. Chad's actually still on the water, and he is continuing to fly fish because he wants to catch a fish since I didn't catch one. But I decided to come out here and do a little bit of kayaking. Now, this isn't something that's currently offered, but come next season, you'll be able to kayak on these waters. There's a lot of changes coming here and a lot of fun to be had, and we want to tell you all about it right now. Falcon's Ledge is a 19,000 square foot lodge here in eastern Utah that uh, is set up in a private 600 acre canyon that has beautiful views of the surrounding Red Rock Cliffs and the eight private lakes in the canyon and specializes in outdoor recreation for groups of family members, corporate groups, business retreats, and uh, things of that nature. It has nine rooms in the lodge. All of the rooms have their own private full bathrooms. We can provide all meals through our kitchen and chef service. Any groups that want to do their own cooking are welcome to do so. Uh, we are building an additional lodge that will house another 20 people. This next upcoming year, 2018, we'll be able to accommodate groups from 10 to 60 people. So groups that come to Falcon's Ledge can fly fish on the private lakes, enjoy lake recreation such as kayaking, canoeing, paddle boarding, and then we have a 3,000 acre pheasant hunting preserve just 20 minutes down the road that groups in the fall and winter can pheasant hunt. One of the best parts of working here at Falcon's Ledge and operating Falcon's Ledge is to see the camaraderie and the uh, enjoyment and the, the lifelong memories that people make as they come out and learn to fly fish or, or learn to bird hunt and experience something that they've never experienced before or, or they have experienced before but uh, but you know love to do it and, and it's just a lifelong memory for them. Pull. You know, I could tell you I got that, but I'm not going to lie to you. You're my friend. What trip to a lodge out in the mountains would not be complete with a final activity we're looking at today, which is a little bit of skeet shooting. They have a range here, and uh, it's definitely out here in the hills. Well, right now we're going to leave this adventure, and we're going to go off to our trailhead adventure brought to you each week by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Imagine a wakeboard tournament where all the water sports get to play. Check it out. Sometimes it can be tough to find the perfect family activity, particularly with varying ages and diverse interests between parents and children. But somehow, a day on the lake becomes the great equalizer. Whether enjoying the speed and aerial trickery of the wakeboard, the ease and stability of a surfboard, or just relaxing on the boat, anybody can find something to enjoy. But how do you know which activity is for you? Well, that's where the annual Wake Up Weekend comes in. So this is the 8th annual Wake Up Weekend. Uh, actually, the 8th annual Taiga Wake Up is tomorrow, and this is our third year of today's activity, which is the uh, pre-Wake Up Sunset Surf Session demo, uh, which what we do is we bring together all the major boat manufacturers and their retailers to be able to uh, demo those boats and a myriad of boards that they sell through their pro shops uh, to a kind of a curated audience of existing boat uh, owners and people that are into this culture and into this sport specifically. And then tomorrow is one of the longest running and largest uh, grassroots wakeboard competitions in uh, the western U.S. So wakeboarding is a little bit more of an aggressive agro sport um, that does have consequences as you would progress and advance through it. And what's really nice about wake surfing is that the whole family does it. So when I go out and do a demo or something, I'm usually teaching the kids, mom and dad, and often the grandparents to do it. Typically, the last weekend of July, boat retailers, wakeboarders, extreme sports enthusiasts, and kids who just like to splash around 
gather at Pineview Reservoir just outside of Huntsville, Utah for the Wake Up Weekend. A surprisingly diverse group of vendors dot the shoreline to show their support of the event. Some of them, like our friends at ADSSS, are more sand than sea, but the event gives them a chance to share what they love with even more people. ADSSS, when we got started with it, uh, Club Rec asked us to come up and help cart machines around and people around, and from there it just turned into an every, every year chance for us to be out in the public and be able to help them out and see, show them a little bit of what we do at our dealership. Can-Am, Polaris, Sea-Doo, Husqvarna, and KTM, which we have basically we're your one-stop shop um, in West Haven, Utah. Now the fun isn't only reserved for people on the water. The Wake Fest is a cornucopia of activities on the shoreline. Feeling flighty? Check out the helicopter simulator. Want to impress the Pepsi guys? Try out some of their beach games. Have some dance moves that you've just got to let out? <laughs> Maybe keep those to yourself. But ultimately, just have fun. It's a crucial ingredient when it comes to creating long-lasting memories. I've grown up on the water. Um, to be able to come up here and get away from really everything, from tubing to surfing to wakeboarding to water skiing to just being with family and friends out on the water, it's, that's hard to beat. Now, wakeboarding and wake surfing are both relatively small sports. Nobody's going to argue that wakeboarding rivals the NFL in size or scope, but events like these serve as reminders that these smaller sports can still prove to be a unifying force for families. But bonding like this isn't solely locked to the water. We live in this outdoor recreation mecca, and it's, it's incredibly important that you know people that are invested in the community come together and that the retailers come together, and it's the only thing that really keeps it healthy is when you're kind of driving some commerce and, and continuing to build community and participation. Uh, so there, that's kind of the, the premise around everything that we do is, is kind of keeping it healthy. We take them out, we do demo rides all the time, uh, whether it's at the lake, whether it's in the sand at the desert, the dunes, the snow up in the mountains, just mountain riding up in the trails. I mean, Utah has so much to offer that so many people don't even know about. You know, and for us to be able to take them in our machines and show them that, it's, it's pretty cool to see the look on their face when you come to the lake or you take them up at 10,000 feet in the mountains and they've never seen that before. From the trailhead, I'm Joe Davis. There's a little place on a Utah map Where I was raised, where my heart's at Where the sagebrush grows wild and high And the stars come out at night Oh, there ain't nothing like Being raised in the basin with a youth reservation Skin starvation, that Duchesne County life our Trailhead segment today is sponsored by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. That's that great place where you can order all kinds of accessories for your ATV or your motorcycles, and you'll ship it right to your door. Just go to the RockyMountainATVMC.com website. If you believe life starts where the blacktop ends, if the power of an engine makes your heart race, don't settle for anything less than Polaris Razor, the ultimate off-road vehicle. With unequaled power, unrivaled suspension, and unmatched agility, all perfectly combined to help you chase down what matters most. Polaris Razor, we fuel your freedom. Summertime. And now it's even better because summer is free at Race City RV. That's right. Purchase a trailer or motorhome from Race City. Pay nothing till October. Over $10,000 off. Time to buy is now. Summer's free at Race City RV. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. Literally having lunch. I mean, 
You know, they say food tastes better outdoors. Can it possibly taste better than being here with the lodge in the background, the serene lake, knowing that there's a fish fry waiting for us there? Just I know. <laughs> after, we, after we eat this, we'll have the fish fry. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, well, now it's time for our calendar events, some of the upcoming events that you're going to want to put on your calendar. Mm -hmm. And the first one is the Paiute ATV Jamboree, taking place August 7th through the 12th in Marysville, Utah. We talked about this last week, and it's going to be a great event. Bring your ATV, bring your UTV, whatever you got. Go down there and enjoy. You're going to be able to go out on the Paiute ATV trail system and just experience some of the, the, the hidden beauty that Utah has to offer. We're going to be down there, so we hope to see you there. That's true. Now, the next one, the Juab County Fair starts on... August the 5th, uh, the 5th yeah. goes through the 12th, I believe. They've got the carnival rides, they've got all the fun stuff that you would have. I mean, this is traditional county fair, you know, like the potato pancakes. Oh, wait, no, that's back in Pennsylvania. Well, the fried food, at least. Is fried food really is always there. really good there. Yeah. Well, the following week in Helper, Utah, which Zach Cipriano talked about in our travel adventure today, is the Helper Arts Music and Film Festival. This is a great time to come out to experience Helper. It's really a beautiful town to meet some of the local artists there and to explore by ATV and go out on the water and just have some great adventures. That same weekend, actually, you are gonna be somewhere very, very special and very rare. From That's true. So this isn't something that you were gonna watch on our show. It is something you should be following on Facebook. We, on the 19th of August, in the morning, are leaving and we are going to trek into Idaho be right under the full solar eclipse of the sun. We will be bringing you Facebook updates, some of them live. Just be watching for updates day and night, and we'll let you know how things go. We've got a nice little place staked out right on the Henry's Fork of the Snake River. Perfect. Well, if you need another reason to be on Facebook and to become a fan of At Your Leisure, our winner this week comes from Facebook. They posted this photo. Take a look at it. Congratulations. Give us a call at 801-947-8888 because you are the winner of a Camp Chef stove. Check that out. It's a Denali. These are great little units, perfect for a family camp out. We give away some cool stuff, so become a fan on Facebook and you can post your photos there. And I have one last excuse for you to get uh, really excited about our program. Next week's show. Take a look. We're hitting the white water next week on AYL as Chad and Rhea raft down Salmon River and discover that you don't have to go far from civilization to find incredible adventure. From there, Darren and Jill will be smashing into county commissioners at an event where politics get down and dirty. Lastly, Reese Stein follows some kids as they discover different forms of recreation on the outdoors next week. Well, next week's show looks great, as always. Well, of course, this week's wasn't well, all it wasn't, a, it wasn't a comparison, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now listen, this is a really great place. You want to bring your family up here, a corporate retreat, family reunion, your sweetie. It's easy, easy to do. You go to falconsledge.com. you got all the information right there. All right, well, that's all the time we have for this week. Remember, get out there and create your own adventures. At your leisure. Fried food is always good at the fair. Now, after that, which Zach's to the blah. Well, the next week, April. <laughs> oh. <laughs>